everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to bring you a video where we go out to the back of our property and harvest a ton of autumn berries. Autumn berries grow wild around here and they're actually typically labeled as invasive. So doing this process and getting all the berries and taking the seeds will actually really really help them not to spread. So I'm going to try three different recipes. I'm first going to make some wine. I'm going to do some fruit roll-ups and I'm going to do some jam. And this autumn berry jam is really good. Um, you could use it in the space of cranberry sauce for Thanksgiving. It tastes a lot like a cranberry, but it's actually stone fruit like a peach or a cherry. So I'm so excited to bring you this video. I'm going to post um, a couple of articles saying all the health benefits of these. They're really, really high in lycopene which helps fight cancer. So let's get into it. And I'm gonna go ahead and rewind this morning to where we started harvesting. Okay, today it is pretty early. I just had a few cups of coffee and I'm gonna bring you along with me to harvest some autumn berries on the back of our property. Now these just grow wild here. I've actually never even heard of them before we moved here, but they are absolutely my favorite. I just um, made some fruit roll-ups with them last night and honestly, I forgot how much I like them, but I'm going to have to go back and get more now because I realize these are going to go pretty quick. So let's go ahead and go back to the back of our property where our bushes are located. Okay, so we are back by our autumn berry bushes and just look at how thick these are with berries. And it's like this everywhere. I think we've already harvested, gosh, probably four or five bowls full of these things. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and see what else I can get from these. Just look at how big these bushes are. So my berries are clean. And we got all the stems and leaves out. We're gonna go ahead and put them in a pot and put a couple of cups of water over. We're then gonna bring them to a boil and we're gonna try and mush them down as much as we can because we wanna get all the juice out of these. So as these are cooking, we're just gonna get a potato masher and try and break them up as much as we possibly can. Okay, so our berries are done. I'm going to go ahead and pour them through our little strainer because we want to catch all of the seeds and I'm just going to put it into this big pot. And if you do just a small amount of, at a time, it's easy to just get something hard and really make sure all the fluid gets through. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. And um, when we're back, I'm going to go ahead and measure it. I'm going to split the juice in half. I'm going to use half for fruit roll-ups and half for jelly. So we got about seven cups of um, juice for our recipe. I went ahead and put four cups to the side because we're going to do jam with that. And so we have about three left that we're going to do fruit roll-ups with. And I don't use an exact recipe for this. I just have some honey. I'm trying to use a lot less sugar in our recipes. I ordered some um, pectin that you don't have to have, use sugar for. You can use a smaller amount of sugar and it'll still set, but as is 2021, it hasn't gotten here yet. And I'm also going to add probably just about an eighth cup of sugar. It's not very much at all. And this one we're just going to do by taste. So if you like it without any sugar and just a little bit of honey, then you're done. So it needs a little bit more. Okay, and I have my dehydrator trays all set up. And when you do this, make sure to have your actual silver tray under it because 
this top is really flimsy and it's really easy to spill everything off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fill these trays up and we're going to put it in the dehydrator probably between 120 and 135 is where you want it and depending on how thick it is will de um, depend on how long it's going to take you. So let's get these filled. Okay, so we did a trial run last night. We did one pan that we sprayed down and we did another pan that we didn't. And this is what happens. We have been trying to get this stuff off for forever. So always make sure to spray your pan if you want to get like the nice, um, this fruit roll up strips because this just comes off kind of in sheets. Okay. okay, so our fruit roll ups are done. Here I have just a sheet of wax paper and I'm going to go ahead and use our pizza cutter just to cut this into one inch strips. And this is where it's really important that you grease your pan because it's already difficult to get these out. And if you didn't grease it, it's going to be almost impossible to get them out. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pull these all apart and I'm going to set them down on our wax paper and then we're going to cut them into strips just like this and go ahead and roll them up. So for our jelly, we have four cups of our juice and we're just going to add one box of pectin in. We're going to bring this to a boil and after it's been boiling for about a minute, we're going to add four cups of sugar in. So we're just hitting the boiling point. Um, we're going to go ahead and pour our sugar in and we're going to put um, about a teaspoon and a half of lemon juice as well. And we're going to go ahead and stir this up. We want to make sure it reaches about 220, which is the gelling point. Okay, so we've reached 220. It is thickening up, but I'm going to let it go a little bit longer. If you don't have a candy thermometer or a thermometer that will go as high as 220, you can always do the sheeting method. And this is where you just hold the spoon like this. And when the last drops start coming off in a big sheet together, then you know you're ready. Ours is still dripping, so we do have a little bit more time left. So our jelly is finally ready. We're going to go ahead and load our jars. And for this recipe, you want about a quarter inch of headspace. And this is just typical for James. And I went ahead and my water bath shanner is already warmed up because I had these jars in it. I already sanitized them and I just wanted them to be warm so that we wouldn't have um, the glasses shock and explode on us. So we don't want to lose any of this. And you know it's ready when you turn it down and it already starts to gel up all around the pot. Okay, so with this one we didn't get a um, full jar, so I'm just going to let this set and then I'm going to put it in the fridge. Now for the rest of these, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the rims and put them in the water bath canner. And we want to do this for about um, 10 minutes. We're going to use one of our bigger jars and we're going to go ahead and try and squish the berries as we put them in. We want it just about, um, just about halfway through. And in a pot, I already have eight cups of water to four cups of sugar. And I just put warm water in and just mixed it up until the sugar was dissolved. Okay, so we're just gonna use our measuring cup to kind of speed this up. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and dump our 
sugar water over top. If you see any sugar on the bottom of the pot, make sure just to stir it until it's completely soft again. Okay. okay, so we're gonna leave a couple of inches um, of head space because while this ferments into wine, um, it's gonna rise up. And I have this lid to ferment with. Any lid is fine, but um, if you use one of the ball lids, you want to be really careful because it can't explode because it's trying to get all that air out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and leave this for four to five months. And we'll be back with another video where I'm going to strain it out and we're going to see what it tastes like. Okay, so we are done. I ended up doing a second jar of wine and I didn't have another fermenter top so this one I did one paper towel one way with a rubber band over it and I did another one the other way with a couple of rubber bands over it. This will allow it to breathe but it will keep all the gnats and everything out of it. Okay so this is our haul for today. I'm probably going to go get more if I can. We still have some bushes that are just about right but they're not exactly there. And definitely, I'm going to post my Instagram link beneath this. And if any of y'all want to try out these recipes and send me a picture, I'd love to see it. Okay, well, until next time.